The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. And Kraft, you know, makes the famous pasteurized processed cheese food, Velveeta. Velveeta has a wonderful cheddar cheese flavor that's rich yet delightfully mild. It's delicious. And it's the finest quality cheese food you can buy because it's made by Kraft, the name that for years has meant only the finest in cheese and cheese foods. Get a package or loaf of Velveeta tomorrow and enjoy the cheese food of top quality Velveeta. Made only by Kraft. Well, once a year, the great Gildersleeve, his niece Marjorie, and his nephew Leroy make the trek to Judge Hooker's house for dinner. For the judge, it's quite an occasion because it commemorates the day years ago when he turned Marjorie and little Leroy over to the guardianship of our water commissioner. Dinner is over now, and the evening is well along. Yes, well along. And when he said that, I knew immediately that the only thing for me to do was Gilda. Huh? Oh, yes, absolutely, Judge. Surely you're not sleepy, Gilda. It's only nine o'clock. You no, know, not at all. Just that I ate too much. You find dinner, Horace, as usual. Your chicken fricassee was wonderful, Judge. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Marjorie. Hey, didn't we have chicken fricassee last year? Leroy, the judge serves chicken fricassee every year. Yes, indeed. For this occasion, it's traditional. You know, living alone as I do, I always look forward to these intimate little family get-togethers. Oh, so do we, Judge. We certainly do. Leroy? Uh, Yeah, we certainly do. Uh, We do have fun, don't we? My, it seems like only yesterday when it became my pleasant duty to tuck you children under the protective wing of your devoted uncle. Yeah, I remember, Judge. Leroy, you wore knee pants and a little ruffled collar. Me in ruffles? Oh, for corn's sake. (laughs) That's right, Leroy. And who'd have dreamed that Marjorie, a little girl in pigtails would now be the mother of twins. <laughs> now, Judge, you make me feel so old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what time is it? Leroy. I imagine Leroy is anxious to play a game. Oh, boy! Now, let's see what I have. Dominoes, authors, parcheesi. Oh, brother. Perhaps I should think of something for all of us to do. Yeah, don't worry about me, Judge. I'll look through the family album. A little later on, we want to have our annual song fest around the organ. So if nobody minds, I'll run through a song just to test the organ's pipes. And my own. (laughs) Are you going to sing, Judge? Why not? I often wonder why we don't hear some of the good songs anymore. Oh, my poor Nellie Gray, they have taken you away. And I'll never see my darling anymore. I am sitting by the river and I'm weeping all the day. For you've gone from the old Kentucky shore. What time is it now? <laughs> Watch it, Leroy. Well, now that I've broken the ice, let's everybody join in. Come on, Gilda. We'll sing smiles. You know, if you don't mind, Judge, I'm just getting interested in the album. Marjorie? Oh, I hate to break up the evening, Judge, but I really must get home to the twins. Yeah, me too. You, we'd like to stay longer, Judge, but you know how it is with children at home. I understand. But I've been thinking, Gilda, you have such a large family now. Why don't you share one of your members with a lonely man? What do you mean, Judge? Well, Leroy and I have been such pals tonight, it occurred to me that he might like to come over and spend a few days with me. A few days? I don't know, Judge. Leroy's in school, you know. Well, I could help him study. We'd have a dandy time. Leroy, how would you like to have a lawyer help you with your homework? A lawyer? I'm not in that much trouble. (laughs) 
Well, I'll give it some thought, my boy. Gildy, I'll call you about it tomorrow. Yeah, we'll think it over, Judge. Yeah, thanks just the same. Uh, thank you for a very lovely evening, Judge. You're very enjoyable, Horace. Good night. It has been my pleasure. You have no idea how these visits of yours brighten my life. <laughs> Good night, Judge. Good night, Judge. Good night. Right, George. The judge is a fine old fellow. I always leave his house with a sort of an empty feeling. I couldn't eat much of that chicken either. <laughs> well, you're right, get in the car. Eight times seven is 56. Eight, six and carry the five. Seven twos are 14, and add the five, makes 19. You doing your homework too, Unc? No, Leroy, it's my water report. Uh, nine and one to carry. Why don't you do that at the office? Well, it piles up, my boy. Now run along. Okay. Hey, can I use your red ink? No, I need it. <laughs> Six and five are 11. Uh, how about using your black ink? Leroy, what do you want with ink? I want to put a tattoo on my arm. Yo. <laughs> Leroy, please, I've got to concentrate. Oh, I'll help you. Seven times eight are 54. You're 56. Then, Leroy, stop figuring over my shoulder. Okay. What's the 1,560 gals? No, Leroy. <laughs> you sure have a lot of lady customers, Unc. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, will you go away and let me finish my work? Okay. Let me know if you get stuck, Unc. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'd have had this report out if we hadn't gone to the judges last night. Yeah, well, a man can't ignore an obligation like that. Besides, the judge is so lonesome. Seven times eight are 54. E 56. <laughs> yeah. Cute, the way the old judge wanted Leroy to stay with him a few days. Eight and two are ten, four are fourteen. <laughs> Oop. Leroy, is that you sawing? Yeah. Well, stop it. Okay. That's better. Oh, my goodness. Leroy, now what are you doing? I'm hammering. He... Well, stop that, too. Gosh, how do you ever expect me to get my sled built? Sled? Are you building a sled in the living room? Well, it's dark outside. Now, see here, Leroy. You can do that over the weekend and out in the yard. Okay. Yeah. Try to find something to do other than annoy people. Okay. I'll get it. Yeah, I'll get it, Bertie. Yeah, I'm up. I thought you were speaking. That's impossible around here. Hello. Hello, Gilda. Oh, it's you, Judge. I told you I'd call. Have you thought about Leroy coming over to spend a few days with me? You Well, I'm sorely tempted, Judge, but perhaps Leroy had better stay home with us. Leroy, turn down the radio. What'd you say, Gilday? I said, Leroy, turn down the radio. I can't hear you, Gilday. What'd you say? He'll be right over. More coffee, Mr. Gilsey? Yeah, thanks, Betty. Sure is quiet around here this morning. Yeah, quite a change. That poor little boy. He didn't want to go. You now, Bertie, it'll be good for Leroy. Yes, sir. Besides, we sort of owe it to the judge. He'll be a quieting influence on the boy. Yes, sir. I wonder what the judge's cook is giving that poor little boy for breakfast. Mm. Probably rye crisp and kalak water. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Gilsey, while Leroy's eating light, would you care for another plate of bacon, eggs, toast, and marmalade? Bacon, eggs. No, thanks, Bertie. Hello, everybody. I'm home. Hello, Auntie. Did you have a good day at the office? Oh, fair. Isn't Leroy here? Of course not. He isn't due home until tomorrow. Yeah, well, I thought he might have missed us. Maybe gotten tired at the judges. I guess he's decided to stick it out. Yeah, I guess so. Would you like to see the evening paper, Unky? Yeah, I might glance at it before dinner. 
Thank you, my dear. You, you. <laughs> uh, not much in the paper. No, not much. What's that? The clock. I haven't heard a clock tick in this house for years. <laughs> Certainly is quiet around here. That darn clock. Taking louder than it did yesterday. Well, this is the last day I'll have to listen to it. Leroy will be home tonight. Uncle Morris. Yes, Marjorie? When are you going for Leroy? You know, the judge wanted him to stay to dinner, my dear. Oh. Miss Gelsley, did I hear you say Leroy wouldn't be home for dinner? Yeah, that's right, Bertie. He's been gone three days, you know. You, we realize that, Bertie. I got pot roast and chocolate pie. Yeah, I know, Bertie. Three days and nine meals beside what he eats in between. Now, Bertie, you and Marjorie make it sound like I'm punishing the boy. But I'm not. This has been good for Leroy. A few dull days with the judge will make him appreciate his home and family more. Yes, sir. I sure thought he was going to be home for dinner. Yes, yes. Well, I think I'll go see if I can help Bertie. You're all right, my dear. Bertie and Marjorie can't wait to get Leroy back home. But what's a couple of hours? They have the wrong idea about this. They pictured little Leroy over there playing parcheesa and eating cold fricassee. Hmm. Maybe they're right. Where's my hat? Miss Gilsley, dinner's almost ready. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm going to get Leroy. Yes, sir. <laughs> Judge, answer the door. You yeah, well, little Leroy be surprised. He'll fly into my arms. Oh, hi, Unc. Leroy. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? Where is it, Leroy? It's Unc. He's early. Leroy, aren't you glad to see me? Boy, I'll say. Come on in. Oh, well. That's better. I want to show you what the judge bought me. You? Oh? Gilday, we didn't expect you till after dinner. Yeah, well, Judge... Look I... at this, Unc, a football outfit. Helmet, shoulder pads... And a breakaway jersey. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all very nice. But, Judge, we don't want to spoil Leroy. Why, you can't spoil a nice boy like Leroy. Heck no. <laughs> and just think, I get to take all these things home. Yeah, well, uh, speaking of home, Leroy... Bertie has pot roast for dinner. But, Gilday, we've reserved a table in the palm room of the Summerfield Grill. In fact, we were about to leave. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, I suppose I can come back for Leroy later. Oh, uh, by the way, we want to talk to you about that. We haven't had time to do all the things that I planned for Leroy. How about letting the boy stay another week? Another week? How about it, Unc? Leroy! Oh, I've had a keen time, Unc. The judge even took me swimming over at the athletic club. <laughs> Heated water. Barboiled old goat. What? You know, uh, you know, that, that's fine, uh, Judge. Yeah, we've been every place. We've had a gym dandy time, Gilday. I feel like a kid myself. You second childhood. And Saturday, we want to attend the football game at Center City. I have tickets on the 50 yard line. Well. I'll leave it up to Leroy. Well, let him stay for another week. You don't mind, Dunk. You yeah, no. If you're happy about it, my boy, well, I'm happy. Gosh, you're a swell, Uncle. Well, I've always tried to be. Hey, Unc, I forgot to show you what's in this other package the judge gave me. You never mind, Leroy. I'll see it some other time. Wait, Gildy. Leroy has a package for you. You know he has? His laundry. You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have a busy week ahead, so tell Bertie we'd like to have it back by Monday. What's Bertie going to say when I bring a bundle of laundry to dinner? (laughs) 
great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. It comes out just right. Yes, sir, Bertie wins again. Oh, hi there, Bertie. What's funny? Mr. Houston, Bertie's won again. I got my food budget all fixed. It took a little arranging here and a little rearranging there, but I finally got my food budget to fit my meal. Well, how'd you make it fit? With Velveeta, Mr. Heaston. Yes, sir, that's Bertie's secret weapon for food budget that won't fit. I cook with Velveeta. That's a good idea, Bertie. That pasteurized processed cheese food made by Kraft sure is smooth melting, isn't it? Yes, sir. And that Velveeta sauce I made is so easy. You just melt a half a pound of Velveeta in the top of a double boiler and stir in a quarter cup of milk, season, and bingo, you have delicious cheese sauce. Well, that's because Velveeta has such a swell, rich, yet mild cheddar flavor, Bertie. And don't forget, Velveeta is mighty nourishing, too, because it's so rich in important food values from milk. How are you going to use that Velveeta sauce this week? Well, I'm going to use it with leftovers from the roast for one lunch, and another time I'm going to pour it over halves of hard-cooked eggs on toast. Mm -hmm. I can almost taste that Velveeta sauce right now. So golden, smooth, and delicious. And don't forget, Bertie, Velveeta is digestible as milk itself. Yes, sir, Velveeta sure is good stuff. Why, Mr. Houston, you know Velveeta is Bertie's favorite budget extendifier. Uh, favorite what, Bertie? Extendifier. Uh, oh, you mean Velveeta is your favorite budget extender? Yes, that's what I said, extendifier. <laughs> Well, the great Gildersleeve let his nephew Leroy go visit Judge Hooker a few days. Partly because he felt sorry for the lonely judge and partly because Leroy was getting on his nerves. Now it's the great Gildersleeve who is lonely and it's the judge who is getting on his nerves. The old goat. Marjorie, he's practically bribing Leroy to stay with him. Buying him presents, taking him places. You shouldn't say that, Unky. I think it's wonderful that the judge takes such an interest in Leroy. You can't blame him. The poor man never had a family of his own. Yeah, he'll be poor if he keeps spending money on Leroy. Mr. Gillsleeve, I like the way the judge is treating Leroy. Bertie, I thought you wanted him to come home. Oh, that's because I thought he'd just be moping around that big old house. But that boy's having the time of his life. <laughs> well, he could have the time of his life with me, too, if he were here. There are a lot of things we could do together. You buy George, there's no school tomorrow. I think I'll call up and offer to take him to the roller rink tonight. Unky, Leroy's having a good time. Why don't you leave him alone? Well, I want to have a good time, too. The judge is getting a wee bit possessive. Hello? Judge? Oh, hello, Gilded. Uh, judge, what do you have planned for Leroy this evening? Why, Gilded? Why? Well, I thought he might like to go roller skating. Roller skating? Capital idea. Thanks for the suggestion. What? I knew we were going to do something tonight, but I didn't know why. I'll go oil my skates and take the boy. <laughs> Judge, wait a minute. I think I'd better talk to Leroy about this. Oh, you want to go? Judge, let me talk to Leroy. Oh, I can't disturb him now, Gildy. He's building an airplane. Bye, Gildy. Oop, what a sneaky old goat. <laughs> What can I do for you today? Uh, I guess you can give me a Coke. Very well. I uh, hear Leroy is still visiting the judge. Yeah, that's right, Petey. Spending the winter, is he? He is not. He'll be home in four days, and that'll be the end of the visit. And I mean it. Mm, all right. I take it you're not happy with the arrangement. Petey, how would you feel if your nephew went for a short visit, and then you couldn't get him back home? You know, it it wouldn't make any difference to me. You wouldn't? I don't have a nephew. You, my goodness. <laughs> but Mrs. Peavy tells me we have nieces in the family. Of course, that's only hearsay. You mean you are sure? Well, I've never seen them. Yeah, all right, Peavy. Suppose your nieces went to visit the judge and wouldn't come home. 
You know, this leaving, that could never happen. They don't know the judge. They don't even know me. <laughs> TV, let's drop the subject. You drop it. You brought it up. <laughs> well, I will. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. The only reason Leroy is staying over there is because the judge is spoiling it. You don't say. Mm, I could win him back in a minute if I wanted to buy him everything he saw. But that isn't good for the boy. Besides, I wouldn't stoop to such obvious tactics. Well, look who's here. Hi, huh? Well, Leroy. How are you, Gilda? Hey, Leroy, how about having a big Coke with your old uncle? Well, thanks, Uncle. But the judge is going to buy me a pineapple nut sundae. <laughs> well, he isn't. Leroy, how about me buying you a double banana split with three kinds of ice cream? My, my, now who's being obvious? But, Gildy, Leroy wanted the pineapple nut sundae. I think I'd rather have the double banana split, Judge. Very well. While Mr. Peavy is making the banana split, let's you and I look in the showcase and see what we can see. The old goatee never gives up. Gosh, look at the swell box camera. Would you like one of those, Leroy? Boy, would I. That model you're looking at is 450. Peavy, we'll take it. You judge, you forced me to bring this up, but I'd planned to buy Leroy a good camera for Christmas. Well, in that case, no sale, Peavy. <laughs> yeah, no such thing. Uh, uh, say, judge, what time is it? We don't want to miss the movie. Leroy, don't you have a watch? Yeah, I'll say he does. Peavy, show Leroy one of those wristwatches. Very well. This is more like it. <laughs> Gee, you mean it, Uncle? Yes, indeed, my boy. Leroy. Yeah, Judge? Here it comes again. You remember the day we were browsing around Hogan Brothers? Yeah, they got everything. I want you to go to Hogan Brothers and pick out anything your heart desires. Tell Mr. Bentley to charge it to my account. Yo, brother. Oh, boy, am I a lucky little kid. Just think, anything I want at Hogan Brothers. Isn't that great? No, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> What are we going to do tonight, Judge? What are we going to do tonight? Well, Leroy, I'm afraid I'll have to spend some time on this brief. I have a case coming up in court tomorrow morning. Yeah? What's a brief? In this case, it's the defense that I'm preparing for my client. Did he rob a bank? <laughs> no, Leroy. Now, suppose you run along while I concentrate. Okay. Is he a gangster? Did he rub somebody out? Leroy, I'm not a criminal lawyer. Now, let me see. Case of Mahoney versus the state. An important precedent was set. Was Mahoney uh, a gangster? Oh, for heaven's sake, no, Leroy. Now, why don't you find something to do? Okay. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Party of the first part proved to the satisfaction of the jury. Judge! Yes, Leroy. When you finish your brief, will you play the organ again? We'll see. Swell. And I'll play the drum I got at Hogan Brothers. Okay, Judge? We'll see, Leroy. Okay. I'll try the organ. <sighs> Certainly is hard to concentrate with an active boy in the house. Oh, my poor Nellie Gray, they have taken you away. Leroy. And Leroy! Yeah? Please lower your voice. I'm trying to concentrate. Okay, I won't sing. I'll do something else. Thank you, my boy. Now, perhaps I can get something done. Now, see, where was I? Oh, no. Leroy! Leroy! Oh, he doesn't hear me. Of all things at Hogan Brothers, why did he have to pick a drum? Oh, balderdash. I'll never get this brief out. Uncle Mort, I don't understand. All week you've been stewing about Leroy being with the judge, and now you don't seem to care. Well, Marjorie, I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I never thought Leroy would stay away from home this long. Oh, it's very simple, Bertie. You should have seen them at Peavy's. The boy gets anything he asks for. But I refuse to be concerned anymore. Yes. I can't imagine the judge letting him buy anything he wanted at Hogan Brothers. Well, he did. Uncle Mort, I think you should go after him. Enough's enough. No, that's not the way to do it, Marjorie. 
Let Leroy stay as long as the judge can put up with it. I'll get it. You never mind, Bertie. Hi, Unc. Leroy, well, come in. Hello, Gilda. Hello, Judge. I hope you don't mind, Gilda, but I, uh, I thought it about time to bring the boy home. Yeah, glad you did, Judge. It's good to see you home, Leroy. It's good to be home, Unc. Where's Marge and Bertie? Leroy. Hi, Marge. Hi, Bertie. Hello, Leroy. My gracious, I think you've grown. <laughs> hey, come on. Look at all the things I've got. Let me help you carry them, Leroy. Oh, I've never seen so much. Gilda, I suppose you wonder why I brought him home early? Well, Judge. As a matter of fact, my work has been piling up, and I'm not accustomed to having youngsters around me. Of course, he's a wonderful boy. You bet, Judge. <laughs> But as you see, he is inclined to be a little bit noisy. Yeah, I know, Judge. Who do you think told Hogan Brothers to sell Leroy the drum? Gilda! Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Need a good snack and sandwich food at your house? Then get Velveeta, Kraft's golden pasteurized processed cheese food. Velveeta not only tastes delicious with a fine, rich, yet mild cheddar flavor, but it's nourishing, too, really good for you because it's rich in important food values from milk. And Velveeta is digestible as milk itself. Try it. See for yourself how perfect Velveeta is for hearty, good-eating snacks and sandwiches. Remember, Velveeta is the cheese food of finest quality, for Velveeta is made only by Kraft. Uh, 237. Add 65. Yeah, George, it's easier to get these reports out knowing Leroy's home again. Is 1,209 plus 22. Yeah, that was a stroke of genius. Getting the clerk at Hogan Brothers to sell Leroy those drums. Yeah, I really put one over on the judge. Yeah, let's see. 1,209 plus... Yoper. What's that? Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. Musical composition by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of those famous Kraft quality foods. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Question. What's the best way to raid an icebox? Answer. With Kraft prepared mustard, of course. Because when you add a little Kraft mustard to the sandwich you make, you add a lot of tang. And here's something for you professional icebox raiders to remember. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard, with that delicately spiced mild flavor. Ah, and then there's Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds on hand. Then you won't meet up with a dish, but what you'll have just the mustard to add a lot of tang. Buy Kraft's prepared mustard. Groucho Marx, you bet your life.